Hello everybody, here's part two of this Corsa, so as I told you this is my Corsa, I bought it for my son, so this is a bit of a head scratcher. So someone had chimed in in the comments to say, <coughs> I wonder what the code setting criteria is for this P0685 about really circuit, really voltage circuit low. So as you've seen in the first video, I checked these, these three pins here, these three red pins here, and they were all checking out good voltage. So what I decided to do was go into this one here, this is pin, you can see that, that's pin 80, this brown white wire there, and see actually back probing these pins, oh that's a pain, you can't actually, you can't get into these things, so you've had to, you've had to use this probe, so this is pin 80, and that's the grounding of the relay circuit, so I've, I'm using my scope here, so I've, uh, I want to back the negative, and I'll let you see it on the scope. Now this is a funny looking signal this. Maybe this is normal, I don't know. But I'll show you. So as ever what you want to do oh dear. If you want to do anything like that, it's usually a bright day. So there you go. <coughs> With the key of that's reading 10.53 volts, right? So that's the grounding side of the relay circuit. So that's pin 85 that would be so it goes it goes 86 is battery positive it goes through the relay windings and it goes to 85 and it gets grounded by the pcm so that's ignition off so when i turn the key on look at that you're getting like a pulse on the side of that relay so you can see it's averaging 1.10 volts now to me for a ground circuit that's a wee bit high i would think but maybe that's normal for a relay circuit i don't know so I thought that was strange anyway, that you're getting these spikes on the ground side. So, we'll fire her up because, as ever, she, she she usually starts the first time, and you you put her off, she doesn't start the second time, you've got to leave her half an hour, then she starts, then she starts all the time after that. So I'll let you see this when we start it. So, we're still grounding the relay, obviously, but we're at 1.05 uh, volts four volts and that spiking has stopped so is that something to do with a relay check? I don't know. The other thing I notice is the spanner light for the engine when it starts running better hit goes off so obviously I can't have that code in it at the time let me see see that one there the car and spanner light so that usually goes off not all the time but intermittently it goes off so it's direct directly related to that code so if you go back into our scanner so that's the code that comes up all the time now it doesn't actually tell you if it's present or not present on the the scan tool so we're going to clear codes we can actually do this with engine running clearing codes so that's complete codes sorry i keep dropping this camera so back again back again so there's nothing there at the moment so I'll just stop, start and stop this till that code reappears or that light comes back on. In fact, I'd be better to get the little uh, Autel tool because it's more like uh, uh, the Vauxhall tool, what do you call that again? Opcom. And it tells you if it's present or not present, unlike this scan tool. So I'll connect Opcom and see if it comes back. Right, everybody. So I wish I'd kept the camera rolling and I can't, get, can't repeat this experiment. So what I've done here was I had my small, my diagnosed Dan test light. I see that's on the ground side, the battery, and then I go to the positive side, test light lights. So, when I was just mucking away with this thing here, what I done was I took my lead out of here, uh, it's on to pin 80, the brown with the white trace, and I, when the car was running, I took that and I grounded that pin there. Now, that shouldn't have any effect on it because it's just a that the ECU is just providing ground anyway, so this test right's providing ground. It's just uh, additional ground. So when I've done that, you can actually, can you hear that? That's me providing ground into the main ECM relay. But when I've done that, the car stumbled and it died and the test light light, so it obviously the ECM wasn't grounded anymore, but I just wonder why doing that would make it stumble and die but the other thing i was going to say it generated the code 
when it was running, which it's never done that before with the P0685 and it said voltage, oh I think it said voltage high, oh can I remember, but the very fact that I got that thing to do that again, strange, and it, the only thing I moved was the wire, so I'll let you see it again, it's the codes, I went and deleted that code, I wish I'd never done that, but there you go, there's, there's that waveform with the car running, it's still at a volt. If I go in and read codes again, no fault detected. So we'll go and try that again. Get the car running. We'll wiggle the wires. There's the ECM under here. We'll wiggle that as well. That clips right in. Uh, take a test light. You can see that works, so we'll take that out. So there's not any difference here. Car's still running this time, but I wonder if it caused it to do that that time. Strange. Put that line back in. The light is not on the dashboard, so I would assume that the coat has not returned. There you go. Hmm. <laughs> Let's look at live data in this little tool. So battery voltage, ignition status on 12 volts, main really active, fuel pump really. So it's this one, let me see if no, we didn't get any other information on that. There you go, main really, that's what it says. Uh, this car is frustrating because you cannot, you can't get it to repeat for the rest of the day, it'll, it'll run okay the rest of the day, so it must be temperature uh, related, definitely. But I just wonder why the thing cut out when I gave it a, a ground. I'm lost. Anyway, we'll just keep trying it over and see if it comes back. There you go, we jump back up to that. Right, here's another thing. I'm, I'm toiling now, so I thought I'd check out the EGR valve. So it resides down the back there. So I've got the, the, the six pin connector plug, but I think you can see there's actually only two pins of that populated. So this EGR has not got a position feedback to the ECU so it'll just be a 12 volts and a, a pulse ground but I think when we're cranking as well we could check to see if we've got a constant 12 volts because that comes from the really this main really again this this one down here so that, get, that supplies that with 12 volts along with the intake a runner manifold and the turbo boost uh, was it tur turbo boost actuator but I was I was thinking maybe the EGRs maybe clogged up or slightly open so when you start it first thing in the morning it's maybe closed but as soon as you start it, it's maybe open and being a bit sticky and maybe that's just causing the non-start issue yeah you just never know but the thing looks a bit painful to get it there it's down there I think you can the top connector of it. Two, three. Right everybody, so I think I'm moving somewhere, I'm moving forward, so it was just getting a bit grey dark here and uh, I was just putting everything away and I decided I would go and start the car again and then the next thing, I put the ignition key on and I noticed 
Uh, you can't notice it in the daylight, but you can obviously notice it in the dark. The, the light, the, the dash lights come on all the time in this car. So as I went to turn the key, I just noticed the dash lights were just a bit dimmer than normal. And I also noticed at the same time, it's hard to see this here. Uh, I can't find my torch. But see these two lights here, it's for the airbag. They flashed on and that the, the, the hazard light went a little bit dim too. And when I cranked the car over, it would not start. And then I left it for 10 minutes and then eventually it did start again. But I just, just noticed slight dimming and then it came. So I think it's a power issue. <laughs> so anyway, I went back to the scan tool and done a full scan. And you can see that we've got fault codes now and quite a few of the modules. Let me see if we put them in the... See if it's a focus on that. So we've got... Uh, in the, well, that one in the engine management is actually just for the EGR valve, I've created that. So we've got three in the, the anti-theft, the body control, central door locking, exterior lighting, heating and ventilation, immobiliser, uh, interior. So it's all the same code, so if I just go into the body control, I'll let you read the codes. Read codes, so you can see that there. So it's CAN bus communication malfunction. It's not present at the moment because it's starting again. And it's CAN bus communication uh, with the ABS and this thing is not focusing the night at all. Put it, put it there. There we go. So it's ABS and the electronic power steering, so it would not start and after that these three codes appeared in various modules, so it's all ABS and electronic power steering. So, here all the time I'm blaming the computer and here it could be a network issue. So, it's a good job it actually got a wee bit dark and I noticed that, like that power outage issue, whatever it is. Of course, the instrument control panel hit uh, let me see, did we have a code for that in the IPC? Uh, go back. Oh, funnily enough, uh, there's IPC there. We've actually got any codes in that at all. And it did go dim, but that would maybe be part of the... Is that part of the lighting module? Or let me see a moment. Interior lighting. Oh, well, interior lighting has got three fold codes. Let's just look at this. So it's exactly the same, the interior lighting supporting a pro uh, reporting the same problem. So I think tomorrow we'll attack, we'll look at the network, that's what we'll do. And <laughs> the other thing that's been emphasised to me is the importance of doing a system scan each time uh, a fault occurs because, to be honest, I've just been looking at the engine control module, so maybe it's a system network. Anyway, so that, that's uh, we're moving on. We're getting somewhere. Cheers.